Hi everybody and welcome to another digital piano review here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and today we are talking about Kawai's CN39, a fairly new entrant to the digital piano market and something our customers are really excited about. We're going to be talking about its action, its sound, we're going to be covering all the connectivity options, how you can link it up to the iPad and the tablets, everything you need to know to keep your research going nice and strong at home. If it's the first time to the channel, please do subscribe. We really appreciate the support and we do try and reply to every single one of your comments. Thanks again and let's get started right away. So thanks very much for joining us again. We are here in front of the CN39 as we mentioned and let's start talking about the sound on this instrument. Uh, it is of course the big brother to the CN29, so often when we're talking about the CN29, I inevitably wind up comparing it to the CN29. And so from a sound standpoint, right away there's a few differences that are really worth noting. One of them is the speaker system on the CN39. We go up to a four speaker system from a two speaker system, which makes a really big difference for if you're just playing this instrument using the onboard speakers. You're not plugging it into uh, a stereo, you're not using an amplifier, you're not using headphones. Uh, this is something that uh, you're just gonna have set up in a room, uh, practice room, living room, whatever, and you just want to get a really great uh, sense of piano tone directly off the instrument. Those two extra speakers are right on the back and they're facing up, they're two tweeters. Uh, and so that's just going to help with clarity in the treble and a little bit more projection maybe in the mid or the upper uh, mid. You can definitely hear way up in the treble the detail that you're getting. Yeah, the detail you're getting up there in terms of hearing all the color, in terms of hearing all the upper partials that are there substantially clearer than what you'd be getting on a, any keyboard really where you've just got two speakers that are facing down. There's a lack of direct um, uh, sort of uh, line of sight between your ear, line of sight, line of hearing between your ear and the speaker. So that's a really nice feature that the CN39 brings because there aren't too many home digital pianos, um, particularly in this price range, where you're getting a multiple speaker system. So that's great. Now diving into the tone engine or the sound engine, uh, the CN39 is equipped with its uh, you know, progressive harmonic imaging engine. It's, it's sort of the same uh, type of algorithm that they've been working on for many, many, many years. Harmonic imaging has been around since I think the early 2000s. Uh, this is their latest version um, and it comes with a polyphony of 256, which for a sample-based um, tone engine, is on the high side, just basically means you're never going to run out of the ability to create new notes and have that engine um, simultaneously processing multiple notes. So if I hold the pedal down and do this, there's still lots of room for me to go back down and then back up uh, you know, several times and every single one of those notes is gonna still be individually processed without maxing out uh, the tone engine. So that's kind of cool just adds a layer of authenticity, especially for people who are using a lot of, um, or using, playing a lot of classical. Uh, so it's got a polyphony of 256, it's the progressive harmon harmonic imaging. Uh, and uh, it is equipped with the SK Concert Grand uh, sample series. So that's individually uh, sampled, 88 notes sampled, uh, off their nine foot SKEX Concert Grand, which is notably warmer and more colorful uh, than their previous EX Concert Grand, which um, almost sort of had a CFX um, type of a sound. It's a little uh, brighter, it's a little sharper, very dynamic, um, but this uh, SK Concert Grand is just beautifully rich. Yeah, that's lovely. Versus the EX. It's 
funny, that almost instantly makes me want to play Elton John. Yeah, and of course back to the e, or the SK. Really hear a big difference there. Now, in addition uh, to the piano tone and the fact we've gone over the polyphony already, this instrument is equipped with over 350 additional sounds that are all on board. That's a huge leap up from what you'd get on the CN29 and a lot more consistent with what you're getting on some of the comparable Roland product for this type of a price range, getting way up into the 300. So uh, you've, you, you've got a, a set or a subset of very high quality, uh, let's call them proprietary sounds that are built in, plus the entire General MIDI 2 sound bank, which is what really runs those numbers uh, way up into the stratosphere. So that's pretty cool as well. In terms of the authenticity of the other sounds once you get out of the acoustic piano range, because I have no complaints whatsoever when it comes to the acoustic sound here. Lots of detail and really lots of tonal range and dynamic range. Um, kind of a tiny uh, road sound. I think they've done a really nice job with their electric piano sounds as well, making them very dynamically reactive. So you're, you're getting a really clear punch. Almost a bit of a distorted sound that you get authentically on, on a real Rhodes. Um, seems to be represented here pretty well. Or you let up on the, on the uh, velocity and you get this lovely bell sound. And of course you've got a whirly with a lovely tremolo on it. Like a DX7. So it sort of has all of your classic EP categories covered, which is great. The organ sound. I have to hand it to Kawhi when it comes to the organ sounds, both in terms of the pipe organ sounds and the electric organ sounds, like your Hammond stuff. When we're in the range of the home digital pianos, so we're not getting into like high-end stage pianos like Roland's RD2000 or Yamaha CP4 or anything like that, we're just talking about home digitals. For the price, I have to give Kawhi the, the number one prize for having the best uh, organ sounds out of the box, and especially because it's pre-configured so that your left pedal acts as the on and the off switch for your Leslie speaker uh, sort of rotary um, simulator. You've got the standards like harpsichord and harp and strings and choir. They're pretty good. Actually, I'd say they're more than pretty good. Um, those are pretty thick. Yeah, and the blending doesn't feel so fake that you sometimes get on digital pianos. Uh, and then of course you're into the general MIDI bank where you've got everything from helicopter sounds to uh, you know uh, synth leads and heartbeats and whenever you need those sounds, they're there for you. Uh, now driving all of this between the speakers and the harmonic imaging engine, there's a step in between uh, that is brand new to the Kawhi lineup and 
Honestly, it's a really big difference. It's worth mentioning. And that is the addition of the Onkyo circuitry. So Onkyo is a Japanese company. They're sort of known as a, a high-end audiophile company. They make amplifiers. They make a lot of uh, sort of spatial processing uh, uh, type of, of circuits for the industry. They sell them OEM. They, they do them through their own product. And uh, so this has a whole bunch of Onkyo stuff under the hood, which is um, adding some, uh, I guess, just sort of structuring to the waveform as it's coming out. It also gives you the ability to set the type of headphone that you have um, and how much sort of a sense of space around um, or your perception of space when you have the headphones on. So it's got some really cool uh, headphone processing. Um, but again, just when you go back and forth between the previous CN37 and the current CN39, or same thing on the CN27 and 29, uh, there is a distinct uh, clarity and a structure to the sound. And I have to assume that that's a good part of, of the Onkyo uh, that's uh, bringing that value. So we've covered all the sound on the CN39. We're going to move on to the action next. But before we do, we're just going to hit you up with some of the critical specs on the screen. The CN39 is equipped with Kawhi's RH3 action. It stands for Responsive Hammer Action, and it's the third generation. They've been at this now for about 10 years. They've been working on this design, and it's the third iteration. Uh, it comes with escapement, or uh, let off sometimes is what it's referred to. Uh, that's that little kind of hiccup that you feel about two thirds of the way down. Simulates uh, what happens on an acoustic piano where the jack um, lets off of the knuckle as you're pressing down. So it's still a little puzzling to me why they're doing this in the digital world since on the acoustic side, you were never really supposed to feel that in the first place. It was kind of just a mechanical anomaly um, that was they never really found a solution for. Uh, and of course, you don't feel it at all when you're playing at kind of a medium velocity or higher. It's really only something that shows up when you're playing uh, in the lower volume ranges on an acoustic. Anyway, all the digitals are starting to simulate this now. Of course, it does add to the authentic feel of you being on an acoustic, but it's sort of weird that it's an imperfection that's being mimicked. Go figure. Anyway, so it's got that. It also comes with a triple sensor. Uh, that is just, it just kind of increases the accuracy of the MIDI output, whether you're using this to trigger a sound on a computer or a piece of software, or even just its own internal sound, you're gonna notice that the accuracy is super high, um, and you're never really gonna get a note that's just kind of sticking out for no reason, or you, you think you played it hard enough, but for whatever reason, the sensor, the single sensor didn't pick it up properly. So you've got these three sensors that are sort of constantly talking to each other and making sure that it's a really nice, accurate readout that it's getting. There's also a texture on the key. Now, Kawhi has obviously made the decision on the CN series to not simulate uh, the feel of ivory, uh, but this is more close to what they've done on the acoustics with Neotex, where it's a micro texture, but the micro texture is not trying to look like ivory at all. Um, it's, it actually just looks like a porous uh, material that's there to absorb a, a bit of moisture and also just to create a little additional texture. Um, other than just giving it a nice, completely clean uh, sheet of white plastic. So that's what you've got here, and that's on both the white um, and the black keys. The RH3 uh, is something that the industry has really uh, embraced as one of the best designs out there. How do we know this? Well, the RH3 is now shown up on the Nord Grand, which is a brand new product that everybody is just going you know, crazy about, and the action is definitely something that they've been uh, talking a lot about in regards to the Nord Grand. Uh, the RH3 is also something that uh, you find on the CN29, um, and I expect whenever the ES8 replacement shows up, it will also be equipped uh, with an RH3. The MP7, uh, I believe, has the RH3, could be the RH2. Uh, anyway, it's a beautiful action. Um, and now you've got the rundown. Triple sensor, we've got a nice textured uh, feel on both the black and the white keys. Uh, and of course, we've got escapement uh, and just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful responsive feel overall. I really love the waiting.
yeah, it's a, it's a nice action to play on. Um, okay, so let's move on to features and connectivity. Uh, but first, we're going to splash up just the critical features of the action so you can get a quick visual of it. Let's get into the features of the CN39 because there's some really cool stuff here and some of which people uh, kind of skip over or go months and months or sometimes their whole ownership of an instrument like this and never really uh, realize that it can do this thing. Um, so let's just start at the top of the list of stuff that I find um, or I really appreciate the Kawhi's included here uh, and we'll just go down the list. Uh, one of them might seem basic, but it's worth noting. Um, there is on the bottom here, and you won't be able to see it, but you know, if you were in front of one, it's easy to see. There are uh, stereo quarter inch audio ins and outs. This is really great because if you've got uh, some type of a small mixer, let's say you're in a home studio or you're in uh, a classroom and you've got some audio inputs coming in from an electric guitar or uh, uh, some sort of a, an auxiliary audio uh, input. Um, who knows, anywhere you've got audio that was just going through some piddly little set of speakers or a headphone, um, you can use the onboard speaker system, take advantage of that Onkyo processing that's there, the fact that it's like really high fidelity four speaker system uh, and 40 watts, which in, if you're in a relatively small space is plenty of juice. I know some amplifiers, uh, guitar amps and bass amps, they're only like 30 watts and producing all kinds of sound. So 40 is gonna give you a lot. On top of the physical audio jacks that you've got underneath, this also re receives Bluetooth audio. And I've got my uh, phone here, it's an Apple phone, uh, and just to kind of show you just how easy it is to take advantage of this feature. Uh, so I just have the Bluetooth screen up here, and if I go uh, into the Bluetooth devices, CN39 Audio is one of the devices that's sitting here waiting for me to connect. So I'm just gonna press that right now, and now CN39 is connected. So that means now I can go into my music app and select something to play. Yeah, why not? Let's play some Bill Evans. And there we go. And so I've just turned my CN39 into a really high-end wireless stereo. And the range on that Bluetooth is quite good. I can be completely on the other side of the room. I've tested this up to uh, like 60 or 70 feet through a wall and it's working just fine. So if this is sitting in your living room and let's say it's a room that your TV is not in and you don't have your main stereo there, you can actually use this as your main, uh, like an entertaining stereo. Um, when you've got company over or whatever, of course, tons of obvious applications within a lesson or when you're practicing uh, by yourself. If you don't have an audio cable, uh, you can just be playing along with an audio track of your choice using that Bluetooth connection. Now I'm gonna mention something that's really critical because we get this question a lot. If you can send Bluetooth audio in, can you send Bluetooth audio out, i.e., can you use a set of wireless headphones? No, you cannot do this. Uh, do not buy a set of wireless headphones, uh, you know, expecting this to work just because it says the words Bluetooth and audio uh, on the spec sheet. It doesn't work like that. One of the issues with Bluetooth audio is there tends to be a latency issue. Um, and so for something that involves immediate live playback where there's not an ability to buffer a little bit, what you're gonna find is you're gonna press that note and then you'd be hearing the note like a split second later. It virtually makes it unusable. So I am not at this point aware of any um, digital piano company uh, that is making, um, uh, giving the ability to use wireless headphones off a piano. That might change in the future as the technology improves or the uh, speed of the processors improve, but at this point, not a thing. But certainly in terms of sending Bluetooth audio in, there's no issue at all and it's a great feature. While we're on the Bluetooth front, uh, this also, uh, Kawhi also makes two apps themselves uh, for, uh, well, not specifically for the CN39, but it, the, you can use it with a wide range of their products. And that is what they call Sound Museum as well as Virtual Technician. Now Sound Museum 
allows you to basically remote control the instrument. Uh, so we're just going to pull that up right now. So connecting the sound museum uh, is, essentially allows me uh, to get a visual of all the onboard sounds. And there are a lot, as we've mentioned. It also allows you to put it into split mode, to dual mode. Uh, dual mode, of course, uh, meaning that you've got uh, two sounds at once. Split mode, meaning that the two instruments are split between the left and the right hand. You can also have uh, two uh, player mode where uh, the top and the bottom are of the same range. Really good for students uh, and teachers if you've got one instrument. Um, and so selecting the sound is very, very, very simple. You just pull it up. Of course, I'm not sure if you can see that, uh, but we'll try and get some B-roll of that uh, just to quickly show you. But very, very easy. to select between the various Super easy to use, and it's also uh, nice and visual. I think they've done a nice job. At this point, I think it's only available for iOS. That's an important question because we will, of course, get um, some comments asking whether it's for Android. At this point, uh, whatever it is, we're in October of 2019, not a thing, but could be a thing literally any day. I know that it's something that they have been uh, working on uh, releasing. The second app is their virtual technician app, and that gives you control of 19 different parameters. That's something that you can control on board, but you can also use uh, the app to do it. And the virtual technician app works really, really well. Uh, I know on the iPad, it's, it's particularly well suited. It's so clear exactly what all the parameters you're editing. This would be like how far the lid is open, uh, the string resonance, um, how much you hear the damper noise when it uh, comes back and touches the string. Like all these tiny little microscopic uh, elements uh, that our ear detects as a, you know, a difference between an authentic piano sound and you know, digital piano sound. It's all there, uh, which is really great because I think 19 parameters from them is close to what you get even with the Roland V piano um, with all of their parameters, and that's a full uh, modeling um, uh, engine, whereas this is uh, sampling with mod some modeling on top. So uh, we've got the apps, we've got the Bluetooth audio, we've got the audio jacks in and out, which is a really great feature. We have things like the transpose, the dual mode, uh, the split mode. Of course, we've already covered uh, the sounds. Um, and last but not least, Let's talk about uh, the cabinet. The CN39 comes in three different colors. The one you see here is called Premium Rosewood. It's beautiful. I mean, we sell all three uh, colors, which is the mahogany, the satin black, and the rosewood. The rosewood by far is the most popular amongst our customers anyway. I think because of its versatility. Um, in a room where it's a lot of warm tones, the browns kind of seem to come out. And in a room where it's surrounded by uh, more cool colors, uh, it does seem to feel neutral. So it's a bit of a chameleon, it's great. But the satin black is available, uh, as well as mahogany, which is a lighter tone wood. Goes really well with cherries and maples and oaks and things like that. Uh, it also comes with uh, a dust cover, and it's actually a really, like it feels substantial. Uh, this is not a flimsy little piece of wood that feels like it's gonna break every time you move it. It rolls really nicely, it's pretty satisfying. Um, and then you've got uh, legs on, on the toe block, so very, very uh, sturdy. Um, and it comes with a bench right out of the box, so you don't have to worry about picking uh, the bench up. So it's kind of a complete package uh, straight out of the box. And then, uh, of course, we've got an adjustable music stand. So we're just gonna review the features right now, and then we'll be back in a quick second with the comparables and, of course, a final sum up of what we love about the CN39. So the instruments the CN39 is going to uh, kind of compete directly against um, 
on the rolling side, this is going to uh, really, from a wattage standpoint, a polyphony standpoint, quality of the piano sound, quality of the action. Um, the DP603 uh, is, is a really good comparator uh, on the rolling side. Uh, it's one that we sell quite a bit of as well, and the CN39 and the DP603 often get compared to one another. Uh, I know on the uh, Yamaha side, there is going to be uh, some CLP products, some of the entry-level Clavinova are starting to creep into the mid-range. Uh, Clavinova um, is going to be often compared to this. Um, again, with any of these, try to make it into a showroom so that you can compare the action and you can compare uh, the sound. The sound is starting to get so good on all of these that there is no such thing as a bad digital piano when you're ready to drop two or three thousand dollars. But the differences are becoming uh, nuanced, they're becoming subtle, and so I think people's expectations are becoming higher. Uh, and it's worth spending the time to really figure out what's going to give you the most satisfying experience. For me, the CN39 is essentially the CN29 with all of the frills uh, that they've kept off the 29 to keep the price lower. You're getting substantially more sound. You're getting a beefier amplifier. You're getting the two tweeters for added definition. All of your in and out ports. You're getting the Bluetooth audio, which is a really great feature. Uh, and you're also getting a, a slightly um, nicer uh, looking cabinet. Um, but you have to get into showroom, you have to try these things side by side. So wherever you are in the world, if you're in uh, that range and I would, you know, who's the ideal customer for this? Well, I think an advanced student uh, who doesn't have the uh, space or desire to maintain an acoustic piano. Um, I think everyone except maybe an advanced cl classical student is going to be thrilled with an instrument like this. I could see an adult who's had an acoustic piano and sort of plays at a hobbyist level, they're downsizing, I could see them being very, very satisfied with the CN39. And of course, one thing that I didn't mention, but for educators uh, who are using the CN39 as uh, not just a, um, a practice instrument, but as a teaching aid within the lesson, this is equipped with 12 different book series. Um, all programmed in so that you can play back the repertoire within those book series um, as, as reference points as you're going back and forth between the books. I could see that being a really big benefit. So a, a super wide audience for this, uh, for this CN39. Very versatile instrument, very well made instrument and something that's been evolving uh, over many, many years. So virtually no kinks left to be ironed out of a piano like this. So. Thank you very, very much for stopping by and supporting us by watching, supporting us by subscribing. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this look at the CN39. And by all means, if you're in the Toronto area and you have a minute to come and say hi, uh, we're open seven days a week. We'd love to meet you. Thank you so much for your support. Happy shopping. We'll see you soon. Sun is rising, feel the warmth